Hi everybody, today is October 7th, 2019. I am at Tillery Street and Brooklyn Bridge Boulevard. The time is 5 o'clock p.m. Temperature is 20 degrees Celsius, 68 degrees Fahrenheit. And today I'll be doing a walk of the Brooklyn Bridge, the almighty famous Brooklyn Bridge. This isn't the only entrance to get to the Brooklyn Bridge. There's another pedestrian entrance up ahead which connects the neighborhood of Dumbo. But these uh, NYPD traffic officers are here to prevent any kind of vehicular attack against the bridge. They have these, um, what, what I like to call these sugar cubes. Someone's yelling. Oh my gosh. Okay, that's New York for you. I thought this was going to be a leisurely stroll over the bridge, but here, here we have an argument. But anyway, there's two sides of the bridge, if you haven't figured that out already. There's a bicycle side on the right lane and a pedestrian side to the left. And that goes for the entire span of the bridge. A couple of facts about its construction. This bridge was created by John Roebling. He was the designer, but he wasn't the architect which finished the bridge. John Roebling was a famous architect. He cut his foot in 1869 because a ferry uh, crashed into his foot. Unfortunately, he died of tetanus three days later without the bridge having even started construction yet. Pretty incredible. So this bridge wasn't started, but still it needed to be finished. So who takes over? Washington Roebling, his son. So during construction of the bridge, they had a lot of problems. First, they had to secure funding for the bridge. And back then the corrupt mayor at the time, Boss Tweed, raised $65,000 for the bridge and his intention was actually to steal the money but thankfully he was arrested before that could happen and the funds that he raised for this bridge were um, used to secure to help build it and to complete it finally. So anyway, Washington Roebling takes over. This bridge is uh, constructing, it's going along. But um, in the middle there, between the uh, Manhattan bedrock and the riverbed, they need some, something to anchor this bridge so that it can be constructed. In order for this bridge to be constructed, there needed to be a tower which anchored into the Manhattan bedrock. And the only way to do that is through something called a cation, which is practically like a uh, a shaft in order to get the workers in and out and just due to the conditions like of this uh, shaft they needed to go in there like a limited amount of people could go in there they could work by candlelight there was limited oxygen so it was very dangerous uh, situation they had to dig for about half an hour at a time and then raise the worker back up and this is very dangerous because at the time, it wasn't understood, but there is something called Cation's disease. This is what happens when you uh, return from the depths of the water too quickly. And in fact, uh, Washington Roebling, he died from this disease. Well, he wasn't, he wasn't dead, but he got severely paralyzed because of it. He was deaf and blind, so he was useless to uh, finish construction of this bridge. So, who finally finishes the bridge? It is Emily Roebling, which is Washington Roebling's, I mean, uh, John Roebling's, the original architect's wife. She eventually became an engineer herself and, and uh, completed the bridge. But this bridge wasn't all without uh, faults. As great as John Roebling was and the Roebling family, they failed to 
recognized that there was a faulty contractor who used inferior materials in its cables. And this wasn't noticed for a long time until uh, it was too late to reverse the damage. So instead, when they discovered that this inferior material was present on the bridge, they actually doubled down on their security efforts. They used more cables than what was necessary from the original design in order to complete the bridge. But anyway, the bridge was finally completed in 1883 and it became known as the New York and Brooklyn Bridge because back then this linked two different cities, the city of Brooklyn and the city of New York. New York City wasn't five boroughs back then, it was just Brooklyn and Manhattan. That was it. And they were both two separate cities. And before this bridge even opened, it was known as the East River Bridge. So it was known by three different names, the East River Bridge, What's up, Jav? That's my uh, friend there, riding with Jav. You gotta check out his video. He has a great YouTube channel. But um, 27 people in total died during the construction of the Brooklyn Bridge, just due to the perilous nature of the construction. When this bridge was completed, it was the longest bridge in the world and also the longest suspension bridge in the world. It was the longest bridge for 20 years until the Williamsburg Bridge, which is uh, two bridges north of here. You can't see it from this angle. was uh, built and opened in 1903. When the bridge opened, the first person over the bridge was Emily Roebling along with President Chester A. Arthur, Arthur and also a rooster. The rooster was um, carried for good luck. Approximately 150,000 people crossed the bridge on the opening day and there were no problems for the first few days after its opening until the sixth day. On the sixth day, there was actually a woman who fell and there was a rumor that the bridge was going to collapse so as a result people were running on the bridge and trying to like avoid this collapsing danger but what happened was is the bridge was swaying and it made the bridge e even worse that's the that was the intentional design for the bridge to sway and the only other time that i remember that that happened was during september 11th when all the uh People use this bridge to escape from Lower Manhattan. That's when the bridge swayed, but it was still safe due to the architectural nature of this bridge. But um, 12 people got trampled in the sixth day. The sixth day it was open. Unfortunately, it was a very bad incident, and no one trusted this bridge ever again. That's until Emily Roebling noticed that the circus would be in time in town, so she led elephants over the bridge from the circus. This is why you have to stay to your lane. Bike lane is on the right and pedestrian lane is on the left. It's very important. But uh, P.T. Barnum led, I believe, 21 elephants over to the other side. You know, this is an area where the cyclist is wrong because it says here, cyclists yield to pedestrians on the sign here. Even I as a cyclist know that. But a lot of people use this bridge for commuting. That's why it's so busy all the time. And also a lot of tourists come here just to see the view of uh, Manhattan doesn't matter what the weather is, people will come here. So after the elephants crossed the bridge, people trusted the bridge again. And the bridge was renamed the Brooklyn Bridge in 1915. So now that I've gotten the history out of the way, 
we can talk about some of the more contemporary things about this bridge. You've got the neighborhood of Dumbo to the right and the neighborhood of Brooklyn Heights in the far distance over here. Someone's brakes isn't working that well. It's squealing. If you come to the Brooklyn Bridge, make sure you're going early because once you get to midday, this bridge gets very, very crowded and it's hard to take pictures and do what you need to do here. That also, that also goes for cycling as well. And cycling is even more dangerous because um, you have people who don't know the rules and they walk on the bike lane side and that causes a lot of issues. If you like to see some clips of uh, me biking over the Brooklyn Bridge, I'll leave a link on the uh, upper right corner where I rode over this bridge with the loud bike bicycle horn. It's pretty amusing just due to people's reactions. You need a good bell when you're riding over this bridge on a bicycle. It's 512 right now according to that sign, the digital sign, 72 degrees Fahrenheit. They do have some benches here, but it's not really uh, ideal. Here's an area where I don't like is the NYPD, um, like golf carts, I call them. They like park on the pedestrian side and just block up space. Ever since someone climbed the Brooklyn Bridge to change the American flag at the top tower here, um, they've had NYPD posted here to make sure nothing like that happens. But oh, someone's getting married here. Very beautiful picture. That's why I love coming to this bridge. You see great moments like this. Congratulations. Just make sure when you're taking pictures that you yield the right of way to cyclists when they're coming. And also it's a good idea to check behind you if there's someone else. Over here is a great place to take pictures. I recommend if you go here to take a picture, you get the World Trace. What's up? I'm doing a vlog over the Brooklyn Bridge. You're in my video now. But that's the Manhattan Bridge to the right. You got gray clouds and overcast skies. It might rain soon. You see, I even meet my fans on the Brooklyn Bridge. This was great. This is another great place to take pictures. People sit over here and you can get a great view of the tower here right in the middle. Another thing too about this bridge, when it's raining or it's very wet out, you have to be very careful because these wooden planks get extremely slippery. Something I found that very quickly when I roll my bike over here in the snow. This is another great place to take pictures on the Brooklyn Bridge when it's um, pretty empty out. I don't really like it when there's a lot of people. But what you do here is the photographer has to get really, really low to the ground. Maybe I should do like this and point the camera up. You can see the Brooklyn Bridge from the top. Beautiful picture there. You can get a lot of great um, focal effects if you just stand by one of these um, diagonal cable stays. But this is the tower, the Brooklyn Tower, where uh, Washington Roadway became disabled. 
Also, one thing I want to point out too is sometimes you see these locks here. That I believe was a tradition that was passed on from one of the bridges in France. But due to safety concerns, they had to ban them from the bridge over here because it was just causing so much weight on some of the um, lamps and structures here that some of them actually fell into the roadbed and it could cause danger. So there's actually a $100 fine if um, people put their locks on the bridge, although I've never seen that in force. But even if it's not in force, I don't suggest you to put your locks here anyway because the city is just going to remove it. It's just a matter of time. Here you can see um, the plaque for the construction of the Brooklyn Bridge. John A. Roebling in 1869 and Washington Roebling. Notice Emily Roebling's not on there, though she should be. And this bridge was reconstructed in 1954. It had a wide variety of um, reconstructions and renovations. In fact, I believe in the 60s, if I'm correct, there was a cable stay that snapped and the city, the city had to accelerate its cable replacement and inspection program. There you can kind of make out the Williamsburg Bridge in the background. But this bridge connects the Brooklyn neighborhoods of Dumbo with the Civic Center in Manhattan. City Hall and the Manhattan Municipal Building is right over this bridge. It's also a short way from the financial district. Looks like a storm's coming soon. Southwest Airlines plane just flying right into the clouds there. The best views of this bridge is walking over here during a snowstorm when there's nobody else. People think I'm crazy for it, but I think it's just magical. You get a whole different experience doing it that way. Also, I would not recommend walking over the bridge from the Manhattan side to the Brooklyn side because you don't get this gorgeous view the entire way. If you're going the other way, this is all you'll see the entire way. But coming from Brooklyn into Manhattan, you get the financial district, you see the Woolworth building over there, which used to be the formerly the uh, world's largest skyscraper, the Freedom Tower. You have Midtown over there to the right. That cyclist has the uh, chirping horn, which I don't really like, mainly because it's a high-pitched noise that the elderly can't really hear. That's why I like to use a loud bicycle or a bell. It's more resonant. Okay, that person was going a little bit too fast for the conditions here. Okay, I'm gonna look behind me before I go around this person. What really slows down a lot of the uh, Brooklyn Bridge too on the pedestrian side is people stopping to take pictures. I mean, I understand it's a tourist destination, but it is more considered to stand over to the side or wait until people pass before you're taking pictures. It's very hard to do though, because there is a very a uh, big fight for space here between the cyclists and the pedestrians. That's another great picture. I see it right here. Handsome picture. Okay. 
Oh, that's a killer picture right there. The wind's picking up for sure. I wonder if it's going to start raining by the time I get over this bridge. We got people here riding their city bikes. The city bikes are great mode of transportation, the city's bike share system. There's also another great picture here. You get the um, the Lower East Side here to the right with the Empire State Building. But this is your last opportunity to take a picture of the Manhattan Tower from this side. The other way you can only take a picture from the other side looking back towards Brooklyn. There's also a mango fruit cellar there. They're very delicious. As a general rule, it's better to stay to the right as a pedestrian as much as you can. I think the weather is going to come down hard. It's only a matter of time. The sky is getting really dark. See, this woman has the right idea, taking a picture of the Brooklyn Bridge from the bottom here. You get an excellent angle just from here. But I can do it just from video. You get to see the top there as well as the year. It says 1875 with the American flag on top. Picturesque, let me tell you. I've noticed people are generally uh, good about staying in their lane this time around. There's also a lot of um, art sellers on the Brooklyn Bridge too. You can buy a lot of uh, paintings here and sketches. This guy's got a nice suit. Let's see what's happening around this tower here. You see National Historic Civil Engineering Landmark, which it is longest suspension bridge in the world at the time, like I said. Look at this, people are just making fun of this no lock sign that just puts stickers all over it. You can't even understand what it says. There you can see the FDR drive down below, as well as the housing projects of two bridges. Great picture here, but totally risking his life to do it. Gotta be careful of the cyclists here. They get really aggressive about their space. And then you have people like this walking like two abreast. They don't give me any room in my own lane at all. If you want to see what the Manhattan Tower looks like from this side, you got it right there. Very, very nice. Someone else is also using a GoPro with a gimbal to the left here.
crowd it here because this is like the first real picturesque spot you can take of the Brooklyn Bridge from the Manhattan side. This area is notorious for bottlenecks because the cable stays here and the cages and also the bike lane gets narrow. So be very careful with this area. There's also a line sometimes of people waiting to get a picture here, sitting down. What I'll do is I'll step, I'll step to the side here and show you why this is such a coveted spot. You see this? Excellent. Absolutely gorgeous. And look at this cyclist here. I told you before, there's a bottleneck because of all the photographers. Prime example there. Now in terms of the infrastructure, the city does have plans to um, widen the main deck, but they're claiming that they can't uh, speed it up because there's a cable inspection that's due. And once the uh, cable inspection company finishes it, then they can assess how uh, the main deck can be expanded without drastically shifting the bridge's, bridge's weight. So they have to do all these uh, calculations before they can see if it's viable or not. Over here to my right is the Manhattan Municipal Building, designed by the architectural firm of McKim, Mead & White. There's also the Verizon Building, which for a long time didn't have any windows until recently. It was uh, deemed a very ugly architectural site. And over here is another NYPD choke point that I absolutely hate. They should get rid of those golf carts and just bring the officers here, like, directly. Why do they need vehicles blocking up half of the space? Doesn't make any sense at all. For those of you wondering, this weird, weird design building in the distance is called 8 Spruce Street, just known by its address. Originally, it was known as the Beekman Tower, and it's currently marketed as New York by Gary. It's a 76-story skyscraper between William and Nassau Streets on Spruce Street. The architectural style is called deconstructivism. Weird architectural style, I know. And it really stands out from some of the other buildings on this area. Like the Manhattan Municipal Building here is in the Beaux-Arts style. And the green copper dome at the top there is the uh, Woolworth Building, designed in the Gothic style. got runners on the Brooklyn Bridge. They might as well use the bike lane because they can keep up with the traffic. I like this runner. He's keeping up with the cyclist the whole way. So this was a nice walk over the Brooklyn Bridge. I met a fan of mine, I met riding with Jav, talked about the history of the bridge and you can see all the different kinds of people who walk it. To me it is a great day to walk the bridge even though it's not a blue sky and sunny, 
it's overcast it shows you a little bit of atmosphere kind of perfect for that Halloween season right now too To my left here is Pace University, a very prestigious school in New York City, located just at the base of the Brooklyn Bridge. Now I want to give you a little bit of history about the streets surrounding here. There's a street that runs under here called Park Row, but it wasn't always known as Park Row for a long time. In the late 19th century, this area became known as Newspaper Row because there are um, major newspaper companies here, the New York Times, the New York Tribune, and the New York World. And the reason why they um, they chose this area was because it was close to city hall and city government while also close to the little east uh, lower east side that way the newspapers can get information really quickly and also capitalize on the sensational news of the lower east side and the tenements there But that all changed in time because um, things changed. The New York Times moved to Times Square in 1903, I believe. And then, then known as Long Acre Square, it became Times Square. Here's the other exit to the Brooklyn Bridge. You can take it right down the Park Row. It provides easy access to Chinatown, as well as the um, the financial district right next to Gold Street and Beekman Street. We got a lot of nice arts here, artwork. Four dollars and ninety-nine cents each and three for ten. I pause at the ninety-nine cents there because he has it in very, very small font next to the big numeral four. So I should say five dollars for an artwork. Always got to be careful of tourist traps in New York City. They'll put stuff in really fine print so you have to see it. Oh my gosh, this is so horrible. The sidewalk fenders here are taking up the entire lane. And the city was supposed to do something to curb this. And then I love this guy. That vendor recorded his voice and amplified it. Here we have the um, the monks who may or may not be legitimate. You can watch my video on the fake monks in New York City and decide for yourself if it's legitimate or not. But here I am. I finished my walk of the Brooklyn Bridge. Formerly known as the East River Bridge and the New York and Brooklyn Bridge. If you enjoy this video, be sure to subscribe, like down below, and comment. And be sure to watch my other videos on the Brooklyn Bridge. I probably have more videos on this bridge than any other uh, bridge in my history. And I'll talk to you later.